But I can't see the... Well, you see what you want to see. Well, that's it. You see what you want to see. And you hear what you want to hear. Gosh, Mr. Stone Man. Take your butts in the car. Go. Don't you want to look at the Grand Canyon? Yeah. see yourself as a religious person, Greg? No. But I've been sort of driven to it by the mathematics I've been trying to do. I don't see myself as a religious person. Okay, a little demonstration about being able to see God. And this is a good way. This is a sandbag I use in my photography for weighing down my tripods. And this is an example of seeing God and why some can't. And this is it. To all of you who can't see gravity, but you believe in it, but have a hard time or stumble around believing in God, I say, just look around you. Take a look in everything you see, the beauty in the sky, in the trees, in the heavens above, in everything around you, the people, the joy, the laughter, the love, everything. God is everywhere and he's screaming out to you his glory. Okay, I have some inserts that I have to do for this, why some people can see God and why some can't see God. So beautiful snow snowy day i don't know if you can see the snow falling in the background but it's beautiful mankind has seen god physically seen god in the old testament it was as a burning bush a cloud a cyclone of fire and they felt his essence and his power in the battles they fought. But moreover, 2,000 years ago, man saw God, God incarnate, and his name was Jesus Christ. They witnessed his ministry and his alluring and wooing and courting man back to him, to God, for 30, 33 years. And these witnesses, eyewitnesses, witnessed his resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven. So man has seen God. His name was Jesus. I'm a photographer, and I see God through the lens of my camera. In fact, this camera, every time I go out, take photos of sunrises, sunsets, nature, wildlife, flowers, bees, everything. And I see him in all of that. I see God in everyone I meet because God created man in his image. That means everyone you meet is an image of God. The universe and all of nature, all of his creation, screams of his glory. But every man, woman, and child you see or meet on the street, you're looking at God. That, that question of why can some people see and dis, you know, have the discernment in the ears that hear and the eyes that see God and some don't. It's a conundrum. I'm glad I'm on the side of God because it feels right. I know it to be true. Well, having a cup of coffee this morning down in my little studio, I guess, and I've spent some time preparing for, you know, this series of why I believe in God videos target my sons. And 
I've listened to both sides. The atheist, non-believer scientists, and then very renowned scientists like Dennis Noble, Richard Dawkins, very smart people. And they are, I guess, excited about the fact, or they pronounce their atheism, their faith that there is no God. And then on the other side are also equivalent brilliant minds that their science, their math, their biology, physics, and cosmology have led them to God. And they were at one time on the atheist side. And because I'm putting out these videos about why I believe in God, a point keeps coming up that, well, why can two very brilliant scientists, renowned, Nobel Prize winning type Cambridge and Oxford type scientists, one be an atheist and the other a true believer in God? What, what, what how does that happen? It, uh, it, it, it's mind-boggling to me because when you think of it, everybody's trying to prove or disprove something they cannot. You know, it's interesting, this why some cannot see or hear God and why some can. I envision it when people finally come to the realization, atheists who came to the realization of the existence of God and his loving, saving grace and his love for mankind and his desire to be with man. Atheists finally see God. Atheists like C.S. Lewis, like Cy Gart, the biologist, like so many other atheists, when they see God, when the atheist see God, sees God, it's like a colorblind man putting on a pair of glasses, chroma glasses, that he can see color. It's, it's just like a whole world and they break out in tears. Wait. <laughs> I'm 65 years old. <laughs> I have gone 65 years without seeing color. Uh huh. And it is more of a big deal to you guys than it is to me. <laughs> I've seen these videos where people get emotional. And I'm not going to get emotional. That's okay. I am not going to get emotional. That's it. Totally different. <laughs> That's green. <laughs> Four percent of the people in the U.S. are atheists. That's a small group compared to all who believe in God and all the Christians who believe in Jesus Christ. In Europe, those numbers are higher. Can hear a symphony, even though he was deaf, and can see the notes where others can't. Biologists see the existence of life in molecules within the cells where others can't. Mathematic mathematicians see the universe and all of the material things in mathematical equations where others can't. I certainly can't. So mathematics is somehow a rigorous language. It's a mysteriously rigorous, efficient language of science. Einstein could see 
equations of space and time where no one else could. Doctors care for growing life, a new child. Michelangelo, they say he saw his sculptures within the marble before he even swung a hammer. In fact, it was Michelangelo that said, there are three types of people, those who see, those who see when they're shown, and those who cannot see. And there's questions like, why is there something rather than nothing, which I think is a very profound question. It, it is, it is, I've always felt that to be yeah. uh, one of the greatest questions. One of the questions. Yeah. Yeah. How can something come out of nothing? Nothing, yeah. yeah that's not the imposition. So for me, the philosophy, the perspective, the worldview is something that you have to choose. Yeah. you see yourself as a religious person, Greg? No. But I've been sort of driven to it by the mathematics I've been trying to do. Now, one of the things in this film is, I believe in God, I'm a scientist, but David is an atheist. So do you think David is irrational? It, I think it is a more rational position to actually believe in God than not to believe in God. Okay. I find not believing in God slightly irrational because no. it is a very, it is a very um, intolerant position because in some sense you would have to say, I know, that in all reality, there is no God. How, how can it's something that neither side can prove. And I don't think God wants to be proven. I truly don't. That's why everywhere in the Bible, it calls to faith. And that's a th unmeasurable thing or where did it come from some people say upbringing like I was raised in the church went to a religious parochial school but yet I was a demon sinner most of my life something called me back and something originally planted within me came to life as a young boy. It was pointed out to me in my studies this morning by a believer biologist who pointed out that the number of physicists and cosmologists who are atheists is, I won't give the actual number and percentage, but I'm just going to use these numbers, is like 30% three percent. Astoundingly, the number of atheists within biology is 68 percent. And to this biologist, Seigart, it's, it's an astounding thing because he was an atheist and once started digging into the cell and to DNA and to everything that makes up the cell, he, he became a fervent believer in God and in Jesus Christ, our Savior. So something happened, just like something happened to Paul on, his road to, on the road to Damascus. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus and is one of the prolific writers in the New Testament. How does that happen? I have a good friend, a lifelong friend, that says he met Jesus in his kitchen. I, you know, I don't have no reason to disbelieve him because he hasn't lied to me before. It's a pretty incredible story, but it is credible at the same time. So one of the things I'm going to try to talk to is what happens when two very brilliant people 
above normal intelligence can have two distinctly different world views. Atheism, agnostic, whatever, on one side, and believers in God, and another step, believers in Jesus Christ as a saving grace for all of mankind. In the Bible, it talks about this in different areas, and I'll have to bring them up because I've been studying the Bible and theology. I'm just new at it, you know, less than a decade or a decade. And in the Bible, it says that, you know, the, the God of this world, the God we see a lot of happening right now in all the evil and the corruption and the greed and the um, globalists and uh, just anger and bitterness and deceit and media, all of that stuff. The God of this the world. The atheists are lured into the darkness, into that ugliness, that ugly world, and cannot see. They're blinded by the God of this world, where believers have been wooed, courted by God and his love for mankind. Because other things in the Bible say, well, eventually God will let man have his way and just walk away from him. And then there's cases where God will never give up, right? It's a conundrum. It's a paradox. It's a, too much for this farm boy, North Dakota farm boy, to actually comprehend. All I know is my worldview. And that is, I believe in God, the God of Abraham. And I believe in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And I'm on this fine line of defending that to someone if I just tell them, I just know. It's like I met Jesus in the kitchen or on the road to Damascus. I just know, and I'd go to my grave saying that, and maybe a firing squad saying that. But when you tell somebody an atheist that, they just scoff at you. They say, yeah, you just know, right. So that's why I've been studying all these sciences and other evidence in, in all of these sciences and in the universe. Why God, why I believe God opens the hearts and minds, eyes and ears to see and hear him. Well, Dennis Noble said, you can take a, they can extract a piece of DNA, put it in a Petri dish with all the nutrients any molecule would need to do something, to expand, multiply, whatever. And after 10,000 years, nothing would happen. Something needs to tell that DNA what to do. Yet he's an atheist or at least I understand them to be one. And then scientists like Newton, Kepler, Leonardo da Vinci, all have roots deep in faith. What happened? Well, I think there's a great battle going on for the minds of men, luring men, one side to the other. All I know is the more I look at the sciences and into the universe and trying to grasp a hold of 
things that I'm uneducated in. I'm just a common man. The more I look at them, the more they say God to me. Because a Michael Behe would say, you know, DNA, the code in DNA, there had to be a coder, an intelligence, a superior, incredible intelligence. Same with mathematics. And, and to me, in my common sense, farm boy, rural North Dakota brain, Rationally, that sounds right. I mean, it can't be proven. And on the other side, they just refuse belligerently to accept the fact that they can't explain anything. Neither side can prove that God exists. And I believe God doesn't want to be proved. He wants man. He's battling for man's heart and mind, and sometimes he loses. It's hard to think of God losing, but, and, and this is another battle, free will, but we have the choice. What worldview we want to take. I prefer to be on the side of God. I've talked a lot about the language of God and science, mathematics, physics, music, the coding of DNA. And I'll, and I'll continue to do some of those, but I, f I felt I had to do this, that that question of why can some people see and, dis you know, have the discernment in the ears that hear and the eyes that see God and some don't, it's a conundrum. I'm glad I'm on the side of God because it feels right. I know it to be true. I didn't want to make this too long of a piece, but I'm just saying that God grants people wisdom. If you want wisdom, pray for it. If you want discernment, pray for it. And he will give it to you. So I've prayed for it. I've been given that, and I know that there is a God and a saving grace of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. But yet I have a sadness to the other side that they can't see. You know, you want to take the hand of a blind man that's trying to get across a busy street and help him across. But yet if he chooses his own way and just to step out into traffic, well... That might be the end of him. God used to hang out with man, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he showed himself in many ways in, throughout Genesis and Exodus. You know, as a cloud and burning bush and all the rest of it. But I don't think we have the capabilities to walk with God or to see him face to face because just like they would crawl into the temple, into the Holy of Holies, and sometimes if they weren't cleansed enough, they would come out, they'd be dead. So I'll continue to put out videos that sometimes are difficult because, no, most times are difficult. Because looking at these sciences, my brain says it is totally obvious that there is God. Just have to look into ourselves, the whole body, the idea of genes and genes that control my heartbeat right now and how that happens. And it's just, you know, we're not intended to know. We're intended to believe. And belief is a hard thing to acquire. So, this was just a note this morning. Well, I had some coffee. And I look at this beautiful sunrise behind us. Clear sky. Clear blue sky. 
snow on the ground. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for opening my eyes and my heart. And let me show me the way to share that properly with the world. Even if it just changes the heart of one man or lady. One woman. Or one son without a father. But especially for my sons. Thank you.